Welcome to my thoughts on the 1992 animated series X-Men Season 2, Episodes 9 and 10. The episodes are called A Rose Tale and Beauty and the Beast. And yeah, uh, spoilers for these episodes, these two, and the ones leading up to it. And yeah, another two episodes I absolutely love. Let's dive right in to A Rogue's Tale. So, yeah, we, you know, Rogue is scared, and everywhere she looks, she sees this mystery woman, you know, and basically, yeah, it's a, it's a repressed memory that's fighting for control, and, yeah, uh, very, very cool seeing Pyro make a fire lion, see, this is the kind of stuff you only get in, like, comic book accurate stuff, like, you're not gonna see that in one of the live action movies that are all like, oh, we, you know, we gotta appeal to a big enough audience. No, you know, Fire Lion. Badass. And great to see Gambit use the staff. And yeah, we get a flashback where Rogue's redneck father rejected her. I really love that Mystique just lets Rogue use her powers on Avalanche and Pyro. You know, they're standing there, they're like terrified. But, you know, Mystique's the boss, so just, yeah, that was really cool. And, yeah, you know, we, it becomes clear that the, the mystery woman is Ms. Marvel or Carol Danvers. And honestly, you know, there is, there's a, there's a lot of misogynists who react to Brie Larson's Carol Danvers the way that Rogue, uh, you know, does early in the episode. So, I guess she's representing them. And I, I really like the detail that Rogue did not wear gloves back then. I, I think that's accurate to the, the comic as well. You know, basically, like... You know, today, as an X-Man, she is actually really, really careful not to just willy-nilly use her powers. But back then, you know, yeah, if she physically touched someone with her hands, that was, you know, yeah. Let's see. And, um, yeah, so Carol's mind went into Rogue, and yeah, we see, you know, how she, she met Xavier, or rather, you know, Xavier contacted her and called her in, and yeah, I, I quite like the fight in Rogue's mind between the, you know, between Rogue and the, the repressed memory mind of Carol Danvers, and, you know, it, Jean helps a lot, but it is in part Rogue who, who makes it happen, which is obviously important. It's not something someone from the outside can come in and make happen. And, you know, the way that yeah, after all that's happened, you know, Rogue does not consider Mystique her mother anymore, even though she, she raised her like one, you know. So obviously there's a parallel there between her, you know, being rejected by her father and now rejecting her sort of adoptive mother. And the episode does a good job of underlining, like, there was no good reason for her father to reject her. That was not the right thing to do, and it actually led her to some bad people, and that's sadly, like, there's a lot of people, you know, if, if they get rejected by their parents, they end up with some, yeah, some really bad influences, some, you know, sometimes criminals. But it is clearly right, it's ethically right for Rogue to reject Mystique because of what she pushed her to do, you know, no matter how bad things got, you know, she kept pushing her to continue to absorb Carol Danvers, knowing what it would do to her, because she wanted her to be strong, and she, and, you know, it didn't bother her what it would do to 
to Rogue. And so the the yeah, very cool to have a rogue centric episode. Almost everyone has gotten one now. Very, very cool. Um, I guess we haven't really gotten one for like the backstory of Cyclops and Jean. I guess we haven't really gotten one for Xavier either, but those are really the only ones that of, of the main X Men team that haven't gotten, you know, it's. Like, they, they do a much better job on this show than in the live-action movies of making sure everyone's backstory is told, like, given screen time and actually, you know, I get it, you know, with a, with a show, you can actually, but the movies focus way too much on only Wolverine's backstory. And, you know, obviously also some Magnetos, and that was great, but... And, you know, Wolverine's backstory is cool, but I just really wish that they had basically said, okay, each movie is going to focus really heavily on just, you know, one, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe one good guy character, one evil character, and, you know, make some, some parallels. Uh, you know, the first one does a good job focusing, you know, there's a, a lot of screen time devoted to Magneto. And how, you know, Magneto and Rogue have some, you know, similarities and such. Anyway, um, yes, so the, yeah, and, and you know, at the end, like, um, uh, Rogue is visiting Carol Danvers in the hospital, and there's a, a slight smile, you know, so she can tell that there is this person trying to take care of her. You know, in, in addition to the nurses. The nurses, not, that's not nothing, obviously. That brings us to episode, season 2, episode 10, Beauty and the Beast. And, yeah, I really appreciate that the episode makes it clear there's no problem at this Hospital for the Blind before the Friends of Humanity go and make problems, you know, when they attack the place, that's when it's bad. You know, if they just left Beast alone, if if there were no bigots there, you know, it would be fine. So it's not the mutants that need to change or go away, it's the bigots that need to change their their hearts and minds. And I really love, you know, Beast, he'll, he'll kick your ass, but he'll also give you a lecture, you know. Yes, I am a mutant. In fact, you know, it is a very important, you know, to, to, the, to human evolution, you know, just, like, absolutely love that, yeah. Never change, you blue furry, you... And Wolverine is understandably very, very angry. And, you know, yeah, he really, he's not mincing words. You know, attacking, a, you know, a hospital for, for blind people. It's just, and, and this is the kind of thing, you know, like, in real life, you do have extremists attacking, like, the, there have been bomb threats and such a, towards, like, you know, places that, yeah, sometimes they perform abortions, but there's also, like, pregnant women there, you know, so, just, yeah. And, yeah, and we, we you know, get one of those cuts to the, the Savage Lands, and Xavier and Magneto are dealing with a bipedal li lizard that captures them, you know, wielding a little gun and speaking perfect English. I just, I, I love it so much. And, yeah, and, and you know, Wolverine goes to the, the Friends of Humanity, the, the headquarters, and, you know, gets in by pretending to have been beaten up. You know, they're so, they're, they're so gullible that when someone shows up and says, your ideology, it's, it's completely, you know, he, he says to them what they want to hear. He says, I was attacked by someone you don't like, and they're like, 
must be, you know, here, op open the door, uh, here's my bank information, you know, just the, the, <laughs> Here's the here's the Wi-Fi password. Just everything, you know, because here's someone who makes them feel like they're right. You know, that's all that it takes. Like, you just considering that they live in a world where a lot of mutants look human, you maybe want to have like some kind of test or screening process or anything instead of just immediately letting him in like that. But, but yeah, you know, a lot of uh, groups like that, they're incredibly naive and, you know, yeah, easy to fool. Uh, you know, a, lo a lot of bigots have been fooled by, you know, yeah, people who understand the way they think well enough to, like, imitate it just enough that they can, you know, get, yeah. You know, there, there was, um, there was that guy who called, I forget, I'm going to say he called, like, a politician and said, you know, I'm one of the Koch brothers, you know, and, and the politician acted completely like, you know, he, he said all the things that we know he would be saying on, in that call, and, you know, the guy recorded it, and then after they were like, I mean, we thought, there you know, there's, the, the, um, yeah, they they seem to not understand. Yeah, we we know you thought you were speaking to the real guy. That's the problem. The problem was what you said when you thought you were speaking to him. Like, cause he acted like, oh well, you're my boss. What do you want me to do, sir? Let's see. Right, you know, you would like to think that he would listen to the voters, not the donors. But yeah, and let's see. Yeah, and, you know, ultimately, Beast, you know, yeah, he's, he's, the, the, um, he's not going to be there during the, the procedure for Carly because of the bigotry, and, let's, you know, just, yeah, really, really, just heartbreaking to see. And, you know, Carly knows that he's a mutant, and it doesn't bother her. And we see, you know, the, the photo album, and Beast wasn't always blue and furry, you know. And the, the yeah, um, you know, it's, it's very clear that it's, you know, he he wishes he still looked the way he used to. I quite like when you know when he does go to to see Carly, and you know, the you know both are like you're beautiful, you're beautiful too. What about me? You're okay. <laughs> it's a really corny joke, but I like it. And Carly gets kidnapped by the Friends of Humanity because she was seen with a mutant. And, yeah, when, when Wolverine and the Friends of Humanity lead, leader are by themselves, you know, he completely goes mask off and talks like the Nazi that he is. You know, he talks about exterminating the vermin. And, you know, oh, you know, there's a place for mutants. It's just not here, if you know what I mean. And this kind of just, yeah. So, yeah, really appreciate, you know, that I can imagine some kids watched this episode and were better prepared to look through the BS that gangs like the Proud Boys say. You know, yeah, they're not necessarily going to, like, really openly say exactly what they feel but, you know, that you can, if they're saying something really awful, there's a pretty good chance that what they think is actually much more awful. And Jubilee shows up, which, you know, I, I forget some other characters like Jubilee and is about to, like, ask something. And I'm like, are you going to ask where she's been? Like, this, I don't think she's been, she wasn't in, in 
uh, a rogue's tale at all, I'm almost certain, which is funny because her picture from the from the intro is actually there when you look up the episode on IMDb. And I think maybe also the one... Anyway, it's just unusual that she's, you know, she's in almost every episode up to this point. Anyway, and... Yeah, very cool when Beast fights the friend of human friends of humanity. I really appreciate that they make it like dark and unpleasant. Like it's not it's not fun for us to see him like that. It really is. You know, he doesn't want to be using violence. He wants to use his mind. And I like Jubilee pointing out, you know, Wolverine using his head, Beast going berserk. What has this world come to? And, yeah, you know, the, this thing with the leader of the Friends of Humanity, Creed Jr., he is, in fact, the son of Sabretooth, Creed Sr., uh, you know, and, yeah, there are a number of self-hating kinds of, you know, some, some of the biggest bigots are actually driven by self-hatred or something related to it. You know, the actually, you know, when when Hitler was a child, he didn't hate Jews yet. He just had a lot of hate in him. I forget the name, but there was a the the um, there was one specific guy who gave him the idea to really go after Jewish people. And you know, to think if that guy had just told him to get therapy instead, you know, but yeah, you know, like I said earlier in the video, it's really important if you're vulnerable, who you're around, who, what, what ideas are they putting in your head? You know, I, I, again, I forget the, the, the name of the other guy, but he realized Hitler was going to be able to convince a lot of people, whereas he himself, I, I don't think he was that great as not, not, you know, not as convincing of a of a public speaker as as Hitler sadly was you know but yeah you know Hitler the 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 hate was beaten into him by his father and yeah just you know and that's why it's important we we you know we can sadly we can't do anything about Hitler but we can try to stop the next Hitler by trying to reach out to these people and I'll admit I'm not the best at it but it's you know at the very least the the some people can we we can reach and get them to to not go down this path and 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 I really appreciate like We've never seen Creed Jr. as, like, no matter how scared or how overwhelmed, like, even when he was literally, like, let's, wait, was he? No, yeah, I think he was the one who got infected. Yeah, and then I guess he was healed because of Wolverine, and that didn't make him not hate mutants. Wow. But, yeah, that's the kind of hatred that some of these people and groups feel. Um, you know, even then, he was not quite as, like, even, you know, even when he was standing face-to-face -face with Apocalypse, he has never been as, like, anxious. Pa he, it, like, it's basically a panic attack as when he is confronted with the fact that his father is a mutant. And when he, when all the other, when, when all the members of the gang realize that that's the truth, you know, that he just can't stand. That's what he's been trying to... Because if he gets rid of all the mutants, then how could his father be a mutant? There are no mutants. You know, it's it's not really logical, but it's it's an emotional kind of logic. That It's the kind of thing we, we have to all be wary of. If, if something just, like, makes us feel really good, you know, stop and think, wait, is it does it hurt anyone? Because sadly, you know, the, the the lizard brain sometimes leads to, to that kind of thing. 
but but yeah, I really appreciate by the end, you know, at the end of the episode, like Beast is like, we we can't be together. There's too much hate in this world. And now that you know, seeing that Beast is willing to go so far for her, you know, he's he's ready to accept her. And and you know, it's sadly that is the kind of thing. There's a lot of that that it, it takes to to open some of these people's eyes. You know, and and I want to make clear, I don't think that it's, you know, I think if you as a member of minority have the the kind of the the energy and the time and and such to to try to educate, that's great. You know, you're you're you'd be doing something amazing. But if you don't feel like you have, I don't think you should feel like you have to. You know, um, and and yeah, you know, there's a there's a lot of homophobic politicians, you know, and and like there's a there's at least a couple where like they started being open to to you know accepting gay people and not trying to take away all their rights, make it you know punishable. To, just to be gay, the thing that finally made them consider the humanity of gay people is, you know, someone, you know, maybe their son came out as gay or something, you know, and, and you know, it's great that they accepted the, the son, not, sadly not everyone does, but it shouldn't have to take that, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't need, shouldn't be necessary. For, anyway, but but yeah, by the end, you know, Carly's father is like, you know, what? How can I thank you? And you know, shakes Beast's hand, and Beast says, "This handshake is a good beginning." You know, which is a, a great, just yeah, really appreciate. You know, they they don't they don't feel the need to end the episode on like, you know, of a. a like the last thing we see is not like an action scene or something. It's this quiet moment that's really like just yeah, really, really love how the the show just actually respects the the mind of a child, the maturity level that the the you know children watching the show had. And that's it for this one. So catch you again tomorrow, make my marble.